this is the before and this is the after. And I said, well, my son was already... Was handwriting? I don't know whose it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was an example, you know. Yeah. And I said, uh, but my son already has a beautiful handwriting. I'm, I, you know, left-handed people normally do. And I said, I just don't understand why he has to have a drug so to help him get in school. Explain that there'd be no side effects, no problems. He said that there were nothing. Millions of kids take None it. at all. Go ahead and take it. What happened? Two weeks later, my son had a knife in his hand to kill himself and broke out in a sweat. And I immediately called. How do you know he was going to kill himself? Because he told me he wanted to die. He wanted people off of his back. He couldn't handle any more. So I got the knife away from him. And I called the neurologist and I told him what was happening. I said he broke out in a sweat and he's pulling his hair out. He locked himself in the bedroom, beating his head. And thank God I had storm glass windows because he was just banging his head into that window so hard, not wanting to die, begging to die. So I turned around and the neurologist said to me that I had to take him to a psychiatrist because he had emotional problems. And I said, well, I don't know a psychiatrist. Ah, but he did, didn't he? So he gave me the name of one, said he was world-renowned, and he was real good. So I took him to the neurologist, uh, the psychiatrist. And this was on a weekly basis, and I was keeping a day-to-day -day diary of what was happening to my son every single day. And I was reporting it back to that psychiatrist who totally refused to recognize what I had told him had happened in my son's young life with my, uh, his natural father. And he kept telling me that would work out in counseling after four and a half years of living with my son trying to kill himself, a snake biting him and him not even feeling the pain. His A's and B's went to solid F. And then in 86, he began in his adolescent years becoming worse with attempting suicide, hallucinating. He missed a tremendous amount of school because of headaches, dizziness. When they put him on the drug, he weighed 72 pounds. When I took him off of the drug and cold turkeyed him. How many years later? Four and a half years later, he was 98 pounds. Eight months later, after being off of the drug, he weighed 152 pounds at 6'2". That was after taking him off of it. And my son... On October the 25th, my son hallucinated real bad. This little boy was over at the house playing with him. Just he lost all year. of his friends. That was in 1986. Mm -hmm. He lost all of his friends. He had no friends. The only person he had in his life was his mother. I was the only one that he knew cared about him. The school didn't care. The psychiatrist apparently didn't care because I was telling him every week what was happening to my child, and he just kept increasing the medication had him on a sleeping pill that wouldn't even help him sleep. He became more and more hyperactive. He became very violent toward me. He used to take, there at the end, he would take his fist and come at me like he wanted to kill me because he gave me this feeling that I had done wrong. I when had taken the four and a half. When did, you, when did you just say to yourself, these damn doctors are doing nothing. In, these uh, teachers are doing nothing. January. Of 87, I had completed all of the research that I needed to prove to me the drug had done this to my child. And I cold turkeyed him. And watching him go through the drug withdrawals, it was like what you see on a movie of a cocaine addict coming off of the drug. The child didn't eat for a week and a half. And it's all medically recorded where he had abdominal pain so bad he couldn't walk, hot and cold flashes, sweat running off of him, shaking his whole body. How old was he with all this? And he was 15 years old. After I took him off of the drug, my son is now in a treatment center because he became an alcoholic. And he's in a treatment center being cleaned up again. going to be all right, sweetheart? I hope so. Everything looks real well. I spoke with him last evening. and you go see him? I can't see him right now. They won't let me see him. When will you be able to see him? Probably another 60 days. Something worth looking forward to, though, isn't it, huh? Mm-hmm. Damn right it is. Because I know when I get him back, there's no damn body going to take control of my life or my child's life and put him back on something that they know what the side effects are and refuse to tell the parents. And yet our whole country is telling us to teach our kids to say no to drugs, and we're legally drugging them. And we're expecting them to get through school with non-creative teachers 
mm -hmm. that do not want to educate, but just want to give them a drug to let them sit there like a zombie. You just heard this mother's story. You're going to hear some more stories before we complete this show tonight. We're going to hear from our audience later on in the show. Remember, it's called Ritalin. It's supposed to be a very normal thing to give your kids. It sucks! And we're coming back! Stay with us! As president of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, you prescribe Ritalin on a regular basis, I understand. Under what circumstances might you prescribe Ritalin to a child? Well, let me say there is only one set of circumstances under which Ritalin should be prescribed to a child. There is one condition known as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It's a long name, but it tries to capture the essential kinds of symptoms that these children have. What does it mean? It means a group of children uh, usually are almost always where the symptoms begin before the age of five or six who have a combination of a short attention span for the age, uh, hyperactivity, uh, impulsivity, the inability to control their impulses. They are highly distractible, easily distracted by all kinds of things that happen in the environment. For example. Uh, if they're sitting in a classroom, there may be outside noises, which the other children pay no attention to at all. They're simply in the background and can be filtered out by uh, a child who does not have this difficulty. A child who has this difficulty may pay attention to every stimulus that's coming in, every car that goes by, uh, every, uh, every bird that chirps, and it completely distracts them from what's going on in the classroom. Every sound in the classroom might distract them. So they have very difficult time paying attention, holding attention, concentrating. <clears throat> they are often impulsive, sometimes aggressive. Uh, those are the combinations of symptoms. These children also frequently have very specific learning uh, difficulties or learning disabilities. Certainly one of the things that was said uh, in the comments uh, that was made before uh, it, that I agree with is that no child should be placed on this medication alone. Uh, without attending to whatever learning difficulties, whatever special educational needs, and whatever other emotional and family needs there might be. So well, I we, heard, we heard from this young lady, we heard that uh, her son had A's, all right? uh, that he was good at home, no problem, and that his so-called only sin was he purposefully hit back kids. He accidentally hit him. I mean, how many times do you get accidentally hit in a class? Where you realize it's not an accident. Obviously, the kid had everything together, and the teacher needed Ritalin. Well, I don't know that. Uh... <laughs> Let me tell you that I have a very close relative. I won't tell you how close, who was on Ritalin because they the child fidgeted and jumped around and. Uh, Again, was a straight-A student. The child is 21 years old today and is on massive doses of lithium at 21 years old because, the doctor says, the Ritalin didn't help him like he thought it would, but instead he developed manic depression. He developed the manic depression after going through many of the same symptoms that your son went through after trying to kill his mother and father on several occasions, after getting in a fight with five guys, picking a fight with five guys when he couldn't have beaten one of them, and now the kid has graduated from college, how I don't know, only because he was a genius, and he himself is on, at 22 years old, lithium. So, so it, it's not so if far... If you have a manic depressive disorder or bipolar disorder, number one, the early symptoms of a manic depressive disorder and the symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder can certainly be overlapping and one has to be very careful and one has to, to be very observant when you start a child on medication as to what the effect is going to be. And number two, you almost never would only start a child on medication without attending to what the other problems are. Yeah. But lithium is a drug that helps that has done, it's a miracle drug for people who have manic depressive disorders. Nothing else ever helped. Those I'll always wonder, I'll always wonder, Gary, why the kid became a manic depressive. 
right now in the United States, there's some school districts that as many as 23% of children in a given school district are considered to have this type of condition. The condition does not exist, Mort. This is a voodoo science. This is science that doesn't exist. It's you have, saying that every kid should be exactly alike. That's right. It's a school teacher who cannot manage children properly or is not communicating. A kid isn't unique and individual. We shouldn't have a nation where every kid is supposed to sit there obediently listening to information. What if you happen to be just highly energized? What if you happen to be curious? What if you're bored with the teacher? What if you just are bored that day? You shouldn't have to be given a prescription drug. 20 years ago, there were very few suicides in teenagers in America. This past year, 7,000 teenagers killed themselves. 50,000 tried and failed. Now, we How never many had, of those 7,000 have been on Ritalin? Have, do we have a study showing We that? don't, but what we do know is one of the side effects of any amphetamine, and by the way, amphetamines, and that includes a uh, substance like Ritalin, which is an amphetamine, and cocaine addictions are identical. The number one cause of crime in major cities in Toronto, according to information I got today, is Ritalin shooting up. It is the number one street abuse drug in Canada today. They're shooting up 10 to 25 times a day with Ritalin. In the United States, they're estimated four to five million children being given Ritalin. And that's with school teachers making the determination. First off, the entire basis Well, making the initial determination that they need something. Yes, but the school teacher has no right <coughs> to do that. They have no basis in medical diagnosis. And a psychiatrist is making a subjective opinion. There is no scientific criteria. There's never been a double-blind study to determine the legitimacy of Ritalin. And by the way, that's not true. That is true. You can't true. show me a study. None exists. That's not it true. Is well, let me. I see Dr. Greenhill uh, started to make a comment there. Uh, Dr. You were going to make a comment on the study. Yes, I wanted to comment on the last point that was being made. Some of this audience at home and, and here have heard me talk about my sister before. At the age of 14 years old, she was the women's champion in golf, not the junior, all right? Mm -hmm. The women's champion in golf, played from the men's tees, all right? She was five foot four. She weighed 116 pounds. She uh, was late going into her menstrual cycle, and she started that and became antsy, and they decided she needed Ritalin. So they started her on Ritalin, but that didn't work. And they thought, she seems to be getting depressed. She seems to be having problems. Let's take her to the Institute for Living, I think it was called at the time. All right. Let's take her to the Institute for Living. So they took her to the Institute for Living. They had a great cure. Let's give her electric shock therapy. That'll bring her around. After 306 electroshocks, they decided nothing had worked. Still 14 years old, Dr. Buckley, all right, from Yale University, decided what she needed was a deep frontal lobotomy. She sat for the rest of her life on the floor making mud cakes out of her own defecation. Ritalin. She wasn't alone. The hell of a thing. What? Last November, Rod Matthews, a 14-year-old youngster, beat up another boy, beat him to death, as a matter of fact, with a baseball bat. His parents believe that the Ritalin prescription he was on may have been the catalyst to his violent behavior. His parents further contend that the drug put an already mentally stressed child into a full-scale psychotic state. Let me go to you, Laverne. Did you feel that your youngster had the capability of beating someone to death with a baseball bat or perhaps attacking you with a knife and killing someone? Yes, because he tried to do that to his sister. Did he become violent and suicidal? Yes, he did. Extremely. And I know about the Matthews case, and I know for a fact that that's exactly what caused Rod Matthews to do that. In your opinion? In my opinion, the Ritalin did it. In your opinion, then, the drug can make you homicidal. Exactly. And I think one of the studies that if parents or anyone who's interested to know exactly what this drug can do, one of the studies that can be read is a hazardous side effect listed in the Journal of Addiction. And it was a study done in July of 1986. And it lists where Ritalin does cause even manic depressive. Dr. Greenhill. And can surpass LSD in bizarre behavior. You've already... This study shows that cocaine and amphetamines, including Ritalin, once you start taking that includes Ritalin, you have to take more of it to get the desired effect. 
And as a result, the increasing dosage accumulates over years. All the studies show that a person starting off on a low dose generally ends up on a higher dose. Well, let's ask the doctor. Is that true with your patient's doctor? It's not true. Do they it's, start off with a low dose? It's not true in any of the studies Excuse that have me, been done. Excuse me, my son ended up on 95 milligrams of drugs a day, and he didn't start out with that. What did he start and off then with? When he, he started out with 30 a day, ended up with 95, and even after coming off of that, he turned to alcohol because he had to have something. Look, all of the And it is a known fact by some of your done. colleagues that these kids turn into alcoholics, drug addicts, suicidal, and criminals anyway, quote unquote, by one of your most famous colleagues. Well, let's all the of the then. studies, you know, we have, we have perhaps 30 years of studies of this drug. There is simply not one, there's not one controlled study that supports that there is a constant need for an increase in the dosage of this drug when it is being used to treat a child with this disorder. Then why do they increase it, it with this mother? There may have to be an increase as a child grows older in terms of the milligrams, in terms of weight. Has there ever been a study on electroconvulsive therapy, a double-blind study showing the benefit? Has there ever been a study showing the benefit of electroconvulsive therapy? Yes, many. There has never been a double-blind study. Not true. Show me one. Cite me the reference. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just finished a two-year investigation. Cite me the reference. Do you people, made a statement, prove you're, you're right. right. Do the people who there know what one. a double-blind study is? Right? Because you can't do a double-blind study with something like electroshock. You can't do it in the Then why are you it. doing electroshock? It's a matter because of creating a grand mal seizure which destroys brain cells, and that's not getting at the root of the problem. I didn't come here to talk about electroshock. But it's you're the same profession topic. that legitimized for 15 years the use of LSD. It was an accepted drug and psychiatric circles, as with Quaalude. And what about the millions of people? LSD, what about the women who go LSD and were told that never, they had nerve problems and were given I mean, a nerve you pill? Know, you can and say that anything, nerve pill was but well, what we are saying, doctor, is here is this great inexact science deciding how our kids are going to turn into zombies because you birds decide you're going to experiment on them. <laughs> Well, you know, it sounds very dramatic, and it sounds very sounds good. Sounds dramatic. People are dying. People are dying. The hell are not dying. They're dying. This mother's child almost died because decided that he belonged on 30, 40, 70, 95 milligrams of Ritalin. We'll be back in just a second. Stand by. I got one question for you. Now, yeah. I sympathize with, you know, your problem, but you, you said your son was on Ritalin in, from 82 to 86, you said? That's exactly right. Well, you know, I don't mean to be facetious. Let me stop you. I know the question you're going to ask me, so I'm going to answer you in advance. First of no, all, when you're you. dealing with the government, which is the school system, and they're putting you up against the corner, and they're threatening your child, no education without appeal, you don't have any other choice. Come on, quick, come on, quick, say it, say it, say right. it, say it, man. But, you know, if you see your son is on for four years and he's deteriorating, what kind of an idiot keeps him on the drug? Yes. 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 Mother. And I fought for my child, but it's psychiatrists who kept telling me, and let me you add, I a had a Wait a second. How the no, hell are all of us supposed to know who's a good psychiatrist and who's a bad one? Right the best way to I approach it is the wrong way. I had four of them involved with my child paying damn good money for them to kill well, my kids. Go ahead. Hey, 